PBX hacking, also known as toll fraud, involves exploiting vulnerabilities in business phone systems. These systems, often referred to as Private Branch Exchange PBX, are essential for managing internal and external communications within an organization. However, their complexity and connectivity to the Internet make them prime targets for cyber criminals. Hackers exploit these vulnerabilities to make unauthorized calls to premium rate numbers owned by the hackers. These premium rate numbers are essentially phone lines that charge exorbitant fees per minute and the revenue generated from these calls goes directly into the hackers' pockets. This effectively turns victims' phone systems into ATMs, spewing out money with every call made. The unsuspecting businesses are left with astronomical phone bills, often realizing the fraud only when it's too late. Hackers use two main methods to achieve this. First, voicemail manipulation. This method involves gaining access to the voicemail systems of the target organization. Hackers gain access to voicemail systems, often by guessing default pins, which are rarely changed by users. Once inside, they can manipulate the system to forward calls to their premium numbers. This forwarding of calls to premium numbers is a lucrative trick, as every minute spent on the call translates to money for the hackers. Second, they exploit insecure PBXs. Hackers find insecure PBX connected to the Internet. These systems, if not properly secured, can be easily accessed and controlled remotely by cyber criminals. Once they have control, they can directly use these PBX to make calls to their premium rate numbers, racking up charges on the victim's account. VoIP systems, which are increasingly popular due to their cost-effectiveness and flexibility, are particularly vulnerable. Misconfigurations and inadequate security measures make them easy targets for hackers. The financial impact of PBX hacking can be devastating. Businesses can find themselves facing unexpected and enormous phone bills which can severely affect their financial stability. Individual incidents can range from thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars. The sudden financial burden can be overwhelming, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises. One example cited a township with a $395,000 bill. This kind of financial hit can cripple public services and disrupt community operations. The Communications Fraud Control Association estimated annual losses due to PBX hacking exceeding $10 billion in 2016, a staggering figure that highlights the scale of the problem. This amount was double the losses reported just four years prior, indicating a rapid increase in the prevalence and impact of PBX hacking. Phone companies are legally entitled to collect fees for calls made from a customer's system, regardless of who made them. This means that even if the calls were made by hackers, the business is still responsible for the charges. Victims are often held liable due to their own negligence in securing their PBX systems. This legal responsibility can add insult to injury, as businesses not only suffer financial losses but also face potential legal repercussions. The burden of proof often falls on the victim to demonstrate that they took adequate measures to secure their systems, which can be a complex and challenging process. PBX hacking is often an international crime, with hackers operating from different countries. This global nature of the crime makes it difficult for local authorities to investigate and prosecute the perpetrators. Local police forces may lack the resources and expertise to tackle such sophisticated cybercrimes, leading to a low rate of successful prosecutions. The FBI typically only investigates cases exceeding $1 million in damages, which means many smaller incidents go unaddressed. In a notable case, hackers Farhan Arshad and Noor Aziz Uddin were identified by the FBI through data analysis. These individuals were responsible for a significant amount of PBX hacking activity. They were arrested in Malaysia with the assistance of Interpol, showcasing the importance of international cooperation in tackling cybercrime. However, they were released due to legal technicalities, which is a common issue in international cybercrime cases. Legal systems vary from country to country, and navigating these differences can be challenging. After their release, they fled back to Pakistan evading justice and continuing their illicit activities. The FBI placed them on the cyber's most wanted list with a $50,000 bounty, highlighting the severity of their crimes and the need to bring them to justice. They were eventually arrested in Pakistan in February 2015 after the FIA tracked to Dean's cell phone. This arrest was a significant victory in the fight against PBX hacking. 
The use of advanced tracking techniques and international collaboration was crucial in apprehending these criminals. They caused an estimated $50 million in damages, a testament to the extensive reach and impact of their hacking activities. As of the podcast's release, they were awaiting trial in Pakistan. The legal proceedings are expected to be lengthy and complex given the international nature of their crimes. Udin had used the profits from their hacking activities to buy land and invest in businesses, demonstrating how cybercrime can fund legitimate enterprises and further complicate legal proceedings. PBX hacking remains a significant problem due to ongoing security vulnerabilities. As technology evolves, so do the methods used by hackers, making it a constant battle to stay ahead of cyber threats. Credits based on the Darknet Diaries transcript. The fight against PBX hacking and other forms of cybercrime requires vigilance, advanced security measures and international cooperation to protect businesses and individuals from financial and operational harm.